I want folks to see you for who you are, a lost person that's been saved by grace. You're not a perfect person. They need to see us struggling. They need to understand that life throws us stuff just like it throws them stuff. But in the midst of that, we get to serve God. In the midst of that, we get to display our love for Him. In the midst of that, we get to notify what's on the outside of us that who's on the inside of us has made a difference. That's thankfulness. That's gratitude. <laughs> Listen. Why should we enter His gates with thanksgiving, His courts with praise, and give thanks to Him and bless His name? Because He's good! His faithful love endures forever. Not just now, not just when things are going well, but forever. And then just to expound on that, He says His faithfulness is through all generations. It's for all people. And will be experienced for all time. So here's the question I had to ask myself, and I ask you, it's, and this is not about showing off. If you stand up in church and raise your hand so that the people around you can see you, shame on you. But if the Spirit inside of you stirs you to stand up and raise your hands and you don't because you're afraid of what people around you are going to think, shame on you! God's bigger than me. And God's bigger than you. He is worthy. <laughs> we get so caught up in that. Of worried about what are people going to think. That we don't realize that our lack of shouting triumphantly to God and entering His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise and all, we forget that it's because He's good. And we forget what it does to His heart. So I asked myself, when God looks at me, what does He see? Does God see a grateful person? Because we may still be at a place where we don't notify our face of what's really going on on the inside. I, I get that. I under, so it's not imp, as important that I... But what does God see when He looks at me? Does He see a grateful person? Can He tell by my posture that I'm grateful for all He is and all that He has done? When he sees me spending time with him in a worship service. When he looks down at me with my Bible open and my journal or whatever it is as I'm studying his word. When he looks down at me in my Sunday school or small group class. When he looks down at me in those moments, what does he see? Does he see someone who is wanting more? Does he see someone that is expressing their love for him? Or does he see someone that just seems like I better do that so that if anybody asks me, I could tell them that I had a little time with the Lord today? Or does he see someone that is just here to check something off? I, that's the heart, right? He, he's looking at, what does he see when he looks at my heart? And then from that, what do I need to do in order to let the people around me know that Jesus and the Lord have made a difference in my life? my expression of that gratitude to Him. So what does my body language show? Gratitude. And I started with that one because I thought it was the short one. The word that has, not only do we need to learn to be people of gratitude, to live with thanksgiving, but we also need to be people that learn to delight to delight in the Lord to delight in his love for us to delight in his word we need to be people that delight what's that word mean 
It's a high degree of gratification. It's joy. It's extreme satisfaction. It's something that gives us great pleasure. When we delight in something, you might say that you savor it. I, I savor it. I just, as I relate that to food, all right, it's, it's the fact that I want to I taste every bite of it. I want to be able to put that in my mouth and taste it, and I want to know what seasonings were used. It's close enough to lunch to talk this way, isn't it? <laughs> Will I lose you right here and now? Whether it's a fine chocolate, you just like to taste that. Maybe it's a steak. Oh, preacher, quit. You're losing me. Yeah. Juicy hamburger. A bland salad. No, I'm not even going there, all right? But we want to savor. For me, it's dessert, right? That's, I like to savor dessert. So here's, here's what I got to think about this. Sometimes I'm snacking. Does that surprise y'all? You know? Sometimes I find two or three cookies, and most of the time it's three cookies, and I sit there, and before I know it, I'm looking down, and I, who came and took one of my cookies? I don't even remember eating it. But I've eaten it. I've devoured the cookies, but I took no delight. I didn't savor them. Because the opposite of that is when I get that one-of-a-kind, best-of-all-kind lemon meringue pie. And that's in front of me, and I don't cut a piece out of it I just it's my piece but I stick my fork in that and I get me a bite and I put it in and, I, and it just it lights up my mouth I mean every taste bud in my mouth for some of you it would make you pucker and make your eyes squint and water and all that but for me I just enjoy every sour bit of that And not just the first bite or the second, but all the way through to the last bite. That's the savoring that, that, I, that I, I, I'm enjoying that. See the difference. Do I, do, I, do I just devour stuff or do I delight in them? The psalmist is saying, delight in the Lord don't just devour him don't just come and do this moment and walk out of here without savoring what God has said to you today one of those songs that's going to resonate with you understand that's you taking delight in the Lord and focusing on him taking time to look at this passage and for yourself and dig things that's delighting in the Lord and it causes us to shout for joy. That's the best piece of lemon pie I've ever had. That's my best time in the Lord this week. Delighting in the Lord. See, that's the conviction that should hit us. Do we find ourselves just devouring, if you will, or delighting in the Lord. The devour is just to kind of say that we've done it. I ate, and more often than not, I just eat. Oh, that was a good, good burger, but I really, I didn't stop to enjoy every bite. Sometimes I'll look down at that plate. Sometimes we eat pretty quick, don't we? Right? And before we know it, the food's gone and we're full. But we haven't delighted in it. God's good. His love is amazing. Wednesday nights we're studying through the book of 
well, chapter in Psalm, Psalm 119. And one of the things, the heading of that is delight in God's Word. Just in that one chapter of God's Word alone, there are some multitude of references to just delighting in Him and His Word. Verse 16, I will delight in your statutes. Verse 24, make your decrees my delight. Verse 47, I delight in your commands. Verse 70, verse 77, 92, 143, 174. Just all the way through that is, as I delight in the Lord, one of the things that I will delight is I will delight in His Word. And I will look forward to that time to spend with him. He says in Psalm 37, 4, Take delight in the Lord, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. You probably should write that one down. You probably should remember that, along with a multitude of other scriptures. But take delight in the Lord. What's that? Savor the Lord. Why? The same reasons that we give gratitude, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever for all generations. He is worthy of our praise. So Lord, help me to delight in you. There's another verse in Psalms that says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Would you, would you just taste Him? Would you enjoy the bite? Would you just... Would you just let it soak around? Would you marinate in God and His Word? Let your life be marinated by Him? That's, that's savoring, that's delighting in God. So Lord, help me to savor my time and my relationship with You. Not just to be somebody that's trying to check it off of a list or to say, hey, I've been at church X number of weeks in a row or I've done this or done that. We, we need to be here. We need those things. But Lord, I want to enjoy my time with you. I want to come away refreshed, challenged, encouraged, changed because of my time with you. And I delight in that. Lord, your, your word, your time with, in prayer, time in Bible study, time in church services, time in my small group or Sunday school class, time in my service and my ministry efforts that I do, all of those things. Lord, I want to savor that time. I want to delight in the opportunities that I have to spend time with you, to experience your love, and to be in your word. So maybe you would make that your heart cry today as well. Lord, I want to live in thanksgiving. So help me to be filled with gratitude and let it show in my life. Lord, help me to delight in you. Help me to stop and enjoy. You guys call it stop and smell the roses. Stop and enjoy the scene. Help me to to pause. Help me to, to take some breaths to enjoy what's around me. Help me to soak it in. Lord, help me to delight in You, Your love and Your Word. That's, that's the desire of this psalm, that the whole earth would shout triumphantly to God because of who He is and what He's done and what He's going to do, that we would serve Him because of who He is, what He's done and what He's going to do, that we would acknowledge who He is he is good. His faithful love endures forever. His faithfulness through all generations. Lord, help us to live in thanksgiving, gratitude, and delight. Father, this morning, we thank you for our time together. And Lord, I pray that as we have received this word today, that you have stirred in our hearts some step of action that we can take to express our thanksgiving to you, to express our gratitude to you by letting it be seen and heard by other people, delighting in you. Father, I come back to the prayer I lifted up to you at the beginning of this service. 
that there be anybody here that's never trusted in you as Savior and Lord, God, I pray that today would be that day for them. And that, Father, they would come and say, I need Jesus. And for those of us that are here that know you, we would live here committed to you, fresh and anew, to live in thanksgiving. In Jesus' name I pray, man. Why don't you stand to your feet and respond?